How's it going guys? It's Mouseball and this is the Attack Mouse Nation and my salty gearheads. Welcome to Motor with Mouseball and guys today we're going to look at the most powerful Abarth ever made. Now this particular Abarth reigns from its home country of Italy where OSG Old School Garage has tuned it to 511 horsepower. Now for those of you who are very keen with your eyes you'll notice it says 450 horsepower a Barth 695 by Posto. Now 450 horsepower was the previous amount of horsepower they were able to get out of this car but now they have reached 511 horsepower with a complete overhaul of the engine and a much bigger turbo and a better boost island and a whole bunch of other great things that they've done to the car to make it faster. As you can see, they've cut the bumper, they've gotten rid of the diffuser, they've actually hole sawed a bunch of holes in the back to keep it from being a parachute in the back to allow air to flow under the car. Now, I wish they would have added a rear diffuser, it would have looked a lot better and it would have curtailed the air and the turbulence under the car much better as well. But that's besides the fact and that's kind of a side rant of sorts. What's really important is that they've taken a Q car like the Fiat 500 Abarth and they've gotten it up to 511 horsepower. Now, a lot of you might be asking yourselves, how the hell do you take a 1.4 liter engine and make 511 horsepower with it? Well, you get a really big turbo, you cut a lot of the core support out to fit that turbo, and you add a main ingredient that makes all engines high performance, and that's dual overhead cams. Now Mouseball doesn't have dual overhead cams. Mouseball is technically a single overhead cam 1.4 liter multi-air engine. The intake valves are actually actuated by the multi-air brick. And you heard right, brick, because it drops a brick on the horsepower numbers for USDM or NAFTA made Fiat 500 of bars. But in Europe, well, the gloves are off and there's no doubt that this is a street fighting maniac of sorts when it comes down to making high amounts of horsepower. Now in comparison, think about the cars that in the past made 500 horsepower. The C6 Z06 with 505. Any GT500 from the mid 2000s made around 500 plus horsepower. You have the Dodge Viper which made 510 horsepower. I mean, you're talking about cars like the Ferrari F50, which made 520 horsepower, which is absolutely astounding to think that a 500 a Barth could be anywhere near those numbers. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a listen and a look at this very special car. And trust me, it's everything a Fiat 500 Barth can and should be. Unfortunately, it's for Europe only. Now, the first thing I want you to notice about this car is it's a race car. So it's not going to be the most appealing or pleasing looking thing. But the fog light deletes on the 695 by Posto bumper are for aero. The actual big opening in the front bumper, which looks like it was carved with a jigsaw, is actually for the Aura intercooler, which is three rows and fairly large. It looks like it belongs in a diesel truck, not on an Abarth. And the multiple holes that have been drilled in the front end are for the heat exchanger for either the oil for the transmission or for any other numerous part that requires a lot of cooling. So these are very important things that a lot of people in the Fiat community don't address. They don't address the thermal problems that this car has because this car is very small, the engine's in the front, and it's front wheel drive. A Barca of the past never had this problem because the engine was sitting out in the back with the boot open and plenty of airflow around it. Now, another thing you notice is the headlights, which Mouseball has these similar headlights, and the lower headlight, which is the high beam in Europe, 
is completely deleted. Now, mouse balls deleted these as well for thermal management, but this one has deleted it to allow for 511 horsepower out of this amazing machine. That's pretty cool. And if you notice, very, very wide tires on this car. About a 235 to 245 section width, which is extremely wide for the bar. It also has a telemetry screen, and look at the size of that turbo. That's way bigger than any turbo the bar could possibly fit in the stock location. Titanium exhaust, and the holes cut out in the back, so that way the bumper doesn't create a parachute effect. The problem with cars today is that the bumper creates a parachute effect slowing down the car. So hole sawing actually works very well. Now, I'm not a big fan of the rear wing. The rear wing looks like it has aluminum scaffolding on it, and it has a correct curve on the carbon fiber wing, but I doubt it has a lot of adjustment. Not to mention that if you actually look at the car, you know, it could have been done better aesthetically, but you know, it's a race car. It's going to take some damage, and Old School Garage is more concerned about dropping lap times than looking like the bell of the ball. Now, as you can see, those flames that were just shooting out the back of the OSG Abarth, well, that has something to do with a whole lot of rich mixture being dumped down the exhaust and pretty much auto igniting with the hot turbocharger. This is absolutely amazing looking and it really gives a ferocity to this car. I mean, imagine a little itty bitty Abarth, which is considered a cute car, being able to spit fire like an absolute maniac. That's crazy. I mean, I'm blown away by this. <laughs> Now, one thing you'll notice is that the gauge pod has the analog gauges. It doesn't have the digital gauges. And if you also notice the telemetry screen that's there, well, that's for a fast data readout on oil pressure, oil temperature, what gear you're in, and multiple other functions. You know, things like that are not usually seen on an Abarth. Plus, you can see the G meter up in the corner where you can actually see how many G's the car is pulling around turns and exactly how many G's are happening when it goes in a straight line. And obviously it's in KPH, not miles per hour, but once it reaches a high KPH, you can pretty much do a little Google search and get the actual miles per hour put in layman's terms for all of us who don't understand kilometers per hour. <laughs> Yes. 
the bubble strips as often as possible. And that makes for really good driving and using the racing line to its absolute advantage. And those tires are just screaming for traction.
hard on the rumble strips, and this is where he has to really get hard on the brakes. That's a very slow corner, and with a bar, if you took a corner like that too hard, you'd be rolling on a bowling ball into the That's amazing. I can't even imagine mouse ball being able to do things like that. And as you can see, the car is absolutely stunning. So there you go, guys. That was the OSG Fiat 500 Abarth, the most powerful Abarth ever made. Now, the car currently had 450 horsepower, but now it has 511. And for good reason, because the tuning from OSG is just grade A. And obviously, in August, we're going to be heading down there to meet one of the representatives of OSG. And he's probably going to give us a seminar on exactly how they tune the cars, how they make that much power out of a 1.4 liter displacement, and exactly how big that turbocharger is because it looks like the size of a small moon. Now, obviously, not all cars are created equal. And even though the Fiat 500 Abarth making 511 horsepower is extremely impressive, the car does suffer from a lot of bottlenecks. Obviously, the high center of gravity, its actual shape, which is too small, and it being a short wheelbase car. So that does affect handling to some degree, plus not to mention that it affects how the car tracks in a straight line and how stable it is. Now, what's really great about having such a powerful car is in the hands of a great driver like the one that OSG showed, well, the car is capable of dropping lap times faster than the IRS drops a tax return on you if you're in the lower tax bracket which obviously the IRS doesn't drop any money on you very quickly at all, but they are very fast at taking it from you. But nevertheless, that's the only thing that could be faster than OSG's Abarth, is the IRS coming to collect the tax bill from you. But nevertheless, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I think it's a great representation of what's possible with the Abarth being a race car and being a actual track weapon when created and tuned by the right company and obviously that company is hailing from Italy and doing all the right things that it could possibly do to make the Fiat 500 Abarth one of the fiercest most visceral track cars ever so guys stay happy stay healthy stay wealthy and remember just because you're small doesn't mean that you can't be the most powerful person in the world take it easy guys Mouse ball out.